A vast convoy of Russian armored vehicles, stretched out over tens of kilometers, is advancing on Kyiv, Ukraine's capital. The city has been hit by numerous missiles. Russia has warned there's more to come. Those who haven't fled are prepared for a grueling siege. Many are ready to fight. The Economist's correspondent, Tim Judah, is in Kyiv. I spent time with the Territorial Defence Force, which is a new force of um, civilians. There are thousands of them. I, you meet them absolutely all over the place, and they are extremely ready to fight. At various key points around the city, the Territorial Defence has dug trenches. Um, and the other thing that's been done um, are, are that checkpoints have been put across, you know, major roads. That's to say we've got sort of cranes arriving with kind of big concrete blocks which are being dropped onto the road. And tank traps, big metal tank traps, steel tank tracks are, are also being, being put on the road. I went to see a Molotov cocktail factory. Uh, and the people who are making the Molotov cocktails were all volunteers. Volunteers. Every single one of them was a, was a volunteer. And there were really dozens of people down there in a kind of production line with wine and uh, um, um, beer bottles, uh, wine or beer bottles or, or vodka bottles, uh, making, uh, making, making Molotov cocktails. And the other type of preparation, or the anti-preparation, is just people leaving. And I think hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people have left the city. You know, how many? It's impossible to say. But really the city is very, very empty. I went to the uh, central station to see, you know, there were still lots and lots of people uh, leaving. And in fact, there still are lots of people. Uh, I mean, it, people are basically turning up and it, 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 the timetable, there's no more timetable, it's just that when there's a train going to the west, the, the, the people who can get on it can, can get on it. And amongst the people I met, actually, in the uh, station were a group of eight Indian students. And... Um, the students actually uh, um, had been living uh, very close to the TV tower. Then they'd heard the explosions and one said, uh, this was pretty scary, so uh, we decided it was time to leave and we think this is probably the last opportunity to leave because the Russians are coming. Well, ordinary life is really completely transformed in, in a week. You know, first of all, very few people are working. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing, nothing normal is functioning. Every, every, everything is shut in, in this city. The only things that are open are some supermarkets and there are queues in front of them. There are some other smaller food shops open. There are less queues, I have to say, today than there have been in the last couple of days. Uh, there are still queues outside the pharmacies that are open as people try and get prescription drugs or they try and get, um, uh, you know, just or, or, uh, any other uh, medicine. But, you know, everything in life, everything has been totally disrupted. I mean, considering that you've got the whole might of the Russian army bearing down on you, the fact is that the Ukrainian army by, by, is kind of almost winning by not losing. I mean, it doesn't mean that they, that they won't be defeated eventually, but it's done incredibly well, far better than anybody expected. And Certainly, I mean, far better than anybody expected, and including Ukrainians themselves, I think. I think Ukrainians themselves have been surprised by how well their forces are, are doing, and that means that morale has been pretty high. I think people have been amazed by Zelensky. He's just kind of grown into this, unexpectedly, into this kind of inspiring wartime leader. I think kind of Ukrainians are basically shocked, or oh, the ones that I've met, are shocked and delighted by that. You know, he's a younger generation. He's a man in his 40s. I say younger, I'm comparing him to, to Putin, of course. So what we've seen is this kind of angry Putin. And here's Zelensky, you know, coming out of unshaven, wearing a sort of khaki T-shirt, doing a selfie, going, we're here, it's false news, we haven't fled at all, and we're here to defend Ukraine. Slava Ukraine. People like that. And in general, I think people are pretty... You know, they're pretty amazed and inspired by uh, their president. Everybody in Kiev is looking at their phones all the time, which is perhaps no different from anywhere else in the world. But what they're, a lot of what they're looking at is social media about, about the war and the latest developments. And so a lot of what they're sharing are, and a lot of what's boosting morale are various you know, videos, for example, in the town of Berdyansk, which is a small port in the south occupied by the Russians. Uh, Russian soldiers took up, um, they were sort of lining up in front of the um, 
town hall and uh, people, really quite a large crowd was uh, in front of them shouting, go home, go home, go, go home. Another one which is um, doing the rounds, which has been inspiring people. You see the car coming up to a comp pass a convoy of, of armoured cars and she literally just takes out a, a Molotov cocktail and chucks it at the tyre of the armoured car and then the tyre of the armoured car just bursts into flames. So I think this is one thing that's keeping people informed and keeping people's morale up. I don't think people really know what to expect uh, next. I think that everybody in this city, uh, you know, almost everybody in this city was in complete denial that anything at all was about to happen, uh, first of all. So, you know, now they just have, they're kind of shocked and have, you know, they're shocked by what's happened. I mean, they're frightened of attacks. And, you know, I, as journalist and somebody who talks to analysts, etc., can freely admit that I got it completely wrong. I never thought that Putin would go this far and launch the all-out invasion to basically destroy Ukraine in its entirety. I thought there might have been some sort of limited operation, but I, you know, I never expected this. When it comes to what Putin's thinking and, and what he's about to do, there's only one person who knows what he's going to do next, and, and that's Putin. And if anybody tells you otherwise, they're lying. You know, this is a personal regime. He's in charge and only he knows what to expect. I can actually hear the sirens have gone off, so I think I'm going to, to, to leave you now.